morning. Welcome to our daily devotions today. It is dark and murky in the big city of Irma today, uh, northern Wisconsin. And my glasses are dirty. Glad you're here with us, though, to spend a little time in God's Word. Boy, I can't. Is this light? Ah, that helps. There we go. That light was turned on low, not on high. Good morning. Glad you're here with us. On this Monday, this first day of the, uh, well, of daily devotions in 2023, um, that's kind of a, a different thing, right? We, we, we're done with 2022, finally. I was updating my screen here so I can find you guys. Uh, Monday. Some people are off of work today because Monday is considered the, uh, the holiday uh, since, since it fell on uh, Saturday night, Sunday morning. Uh, I guess technically Sunday. New Year's Day is the uh, New Year's Day is the day, right? Um, as a Christmas Day was the day, right? New Year's Eve and you know, Christmas Eve aren't considered holidays necessarily. It's those days. So falling on a Sunday, it moves to the Monday for most things. No postage today. Um, I'm kind of waiting to see. Um, I don't know if UPS delivers today. But I got a water pump and parts coming for Bonnie's car. And those, according to the confirmations, are going to arrive today. Well, when I ordered them, they were going to arrive on on Saturday. But I have not in a long time had a successful Saturday delivery from Federal Express. Um, half the parts, the big parts, the water pump and some larger pieces are coming FedEx. I don't expect to see them before tomorrow. And some little seals and things are coming um, via DHL, which winds up in the postal system. And you know, I miss the I miss the days of of uh, um, the differences between the shipping companies pre pre COVID, pre twenty twenty. You know, if we go back to well, if we go back to um, even January of twenty twenty, December of twenty nineteen. You know, you you'd order something. Uh, through the postal service, and they'll say, "Well, we're it's in it's in route. It'll get there." Um, you order it, and it's shipped through UPS. Um, they'd say, "Well, it, it's with our driver, and it'll be there today." Um, FedEx would tell you uh, the driver is on your block and will be there momentarily, and Amazon would say, "Well, it's in your living room." So, I miss those days. Now you you know. When, when two-day shipping from Amazon meant that if you ordered it today, you got it two days later. Or like when I was in Marlette, they had a shipping center in in, uh, in Michigan. I might get it the next morning um, with the delivery trucks, the, the, the Amazon delivery trucks. But now if I order it today from Amazon, I still get two-day free shipping, but the two days doesn't start till next week. So I don't I don't know. In fact, I can't remember the last time that I ordered something through Amazon and got it within four days. Um, now I'm just grumpy. See what you did? First day of the new year and I'm grumpy. It's your fault. I'm blaming you. Let's see who you are. Um, Michael, good morning. You and Karen enjoying the music today. Huh? Well, good, good. We'll have that for a couple of days here. We'll find something else probably. Debbie and Grant and Ann, good morning. Uh, prepping, yeah, prepping to watch the parade. Yeah, the New Year's Day parade wasn't on New Year's Day. It's on the day after New Year's Day. Well, you know what, though? That's okay, and here's why. Here's why. What was yesterday? Yesterday was Sunday. And we shouldn't be doing things on, at least not Sunday morning, right? At least not from, from, from the sunrise until... Uh, lunchtime. We should have that time nationally. And I don't care if you're, uh, uh, you, I mean, f okay, from sunset on, well, church, okay? Just, we shouldn't be doing things that interfere with church, whether it's parades, football games, wrestling, band camps, I whatever. It would take care of a lot of our problems. When people have to choose between idols and worship. All right, rant off. Good morning, Deb, Ann, and Grant. Geraldine and Neil, good morning to you guys. Kathy, good morning. 
Jill and John, good morning up there at Rhinelander. Connie and Robin, good morning. Some critter running amok in the cabin. Are you sure that wasn't Robin? Is your is your uh, weasel back again? Verna, good morning. Jerry, good morning to you. Now I'm going to refresh again here and just make sure that I didn't miss anybody. I still haven't gotten to the bottom of this. Uh, yep, see, I did. I, st I haven't gotten to the bottom of this. Why um, things aren't coming. Ashley, good morning. Uh, Steve, good morning to you. Sad Sharon, if you're nearby her. Renee, good morning. That should be everybody, although other people may come in later. Good morning to all of you. Good morning to uh, those watching in the background, but not saying anything, and that's okay. Good morning to you. And to those watching later today, whether it's Facebook or YouTube, good morning, God's blessings, and welcome to 2023 with Pastor's Daily Devotions. I am dressed in casual. I like, I'm, I, I got my shirt that I, that I have protected from Bonnie for <clears throat> another year. I got a I, I got a blue flannel shirt from well through through Ann from my brother in law Glenn here uh, last summer one day and it's okay but it's not broken in to fit me this one I've been wearing this one for boy I bet you I've had, this is wool um, it, it's insulated but it's also wool I bet you I've had this shirt for I bet more than ten years. I bought another one that's that's just the black and red plaid that's insulated um, field and stream or something like that or field and sport from from that fine outdoor store section in Fleet Farm. Um, but uh, that's too warm to wear in the house. And then Bonnie got me that big heavy sweater. Bonnie and the kids got me a big heavy sweater for Christmas a couple of years ago. And it's nice, but sometimes it's too heavy and it's too warm. Okay. Enough of this tomfoolery. Let's get down to the task at hand. Today, uh, we have a commemoration. William Lea, pastor. Uh, although he never left Germany, Johann Conrad Wilhelm, Wilhelm Lea, born in Firth in 1808, had a profound impact on the development of Lutheranism in North America. Serving as a pastor in, in the Bavarian village of Indetelstau, uh, he recognized the need for workers in developing lands and assisted in training emergency helpers to be sent as missionary pastors into North America. Oh, and Brazil and Australia, by the way. A number of the men he sent to the United States became founders of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. Through his financial support, a theological school in Fort Wayne Indiana, and a teacher's institute in Saginaw, Michigan, were established. Leah was known for his confessional integrity and his interest in liturgy and catechetics. His devotion to the works of Christian, Christian charity led to the establishment of a deaconess training house and homes for the aged. Uh, so, yeah, at the as as... As Lutheran pastors, confessional German pastors were being trained in the United States, there was a seminary set up at uh, Fort Wayne um, through through the work of Wilhelm, Wilhelm Leia, uh, which um, is not where the seminary is now. I believe it's where Ivy Tech College is. Um, and during, I think it was during the Civil War, that campus was moved to... Uh, Springfield, Illinois, um, through through the Saxons that came, St. Louis was established, um, and uh, uh, Walther uh, and and his fellow pastors established a seminary at St. Louis. So we've always had two, and then in the seventies, seventy six, I think seventy seven, seventy five, somewhere in there. Um, I want to say the campus at Springfield became uneconomical to run, and the Synod was also running a senior college at Fort Wayne, which is where Concordia Theological Seminary Fort Wayne is right now. And they moved the same, they closed the St. Louis or the, the Springfield campus and moved it back to Fort Wayne. 
at the place where the senior college had been, and they and they eliminated the senior college um, uh, from from our uh, from our church body. Uh, but with that model of education had kind of gone away as it was. The ideas of junior colleges and senior colleges and and things like that. Our, our society had moved away from those things. So anyway, today, uh, Wilhelm Lea, pastor and uh, uh, encourager of missionaries. All right. If you have the Lutheran service book, page 295, daily prayer for individuals and families. I have my treasury of daily prayer right here as we begin this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. O Lord, open my lips. Oh, wait. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Sometimes you got to stop and look at the pages. Our psalm this morning, Psalm 62, verses 5 through 8 and 11 through 12. There we go. Psalm 62. For God alone, O my soul, wait in silence, for my hope is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my salvation and my glory. My mighty rock, my refuge is God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your refuge before him. God is a refuge for us. Once God has spoken twice, I have, have I heard this. The power belongs to God, and to you, O Lord, belongs steadfast love. For you will render to a man according to his work. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. For God alone, O my soul, wait in silence, for my hope is from him, my rock, my salvation, my fortress. You know what? That's a a good way to begin our, our stuff here in 2023 with our with our eyes on him who has saved us. He who is our rock and our fortress. Uh, he who is our Lord upon whom our salvation rests and in whom we receive uh, glory. I always love the it, it's a it's a Hebrew poetry no, nuance to say, to use numbers in this way, uh, verse 11, once God has spoken, twice have I heard this, right? Now, the Hebrew poetry tends to do that. If it uses a number, the next, the, the couplet that goes with it will have the next number. Um, but what was what was said and heard is that power belongs to God and steadfast love, right? Um this is what the Lord has given us. All right, let's move on to let's move on to our reading from Isaiah today. Isaiah, we had Psalm 62, we got Isaiah 62. It works out. Isaiah 62, verses 1 through 12. Oh, it's not too terribly long. Um, but it is all it is all imagery again. It's it's Hebrew poetry again. So brace yourself. You who said that they didn't like poetry class. All right, Isaiah 62, verse 1, and following. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet, until her righteousness goes forth as brightness, and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see your righteousness, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate. You, but, but you shall be called, my delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as, young man, as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your sons marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. On your walls, O Jerusalem, I have set watchmen. 
all the day and all the night. They shall never be silent. You who put the Lord in remembrance, take no rest and give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes it a praise on the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by his mighty arm, I will not again give your grain to be food for your enemies. And foreigners shall not drink your wine for which you have labored. But those who garner it shall eat and praise the Lord. And those who gather it shall drink it in the courts of my sanctuary. Go through, go through the gates, prepare the way of the, for the people, build up, build up the highway, clear it of stones, lift up a signal over the peoples. Behold, the Lord has proclaimed to the end of the earth, say to the daughter of Zion, behold, your salvation comes, behold, your reward is within him or is with him and his recompense before him and they shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And you shall not be, or, and you shall be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, this is good stuff. This, I mean, that's always good stuff. Let's not, let's not, uh, let's not confuse ourselves on this. Um, but this in particular, remember, Isaiah is speaking these things given him by the Lord to speak. So it is God who is speaking through the mouth of Isaiah. And this is occurring prior to the Babylonian captivity. So we're talking, we're talking um, somewhere in the, and, and the dating of Isaiah is kind of tricky. It's kind of tricky, and, and it's caused, because of man's reason, it's caused some theological discourse to go on about when it was actually written, and if Isaiah was actually the author, or if there's Deutero-Isaiah and canonical Isaiah and all this stuff. God didn't give us the scriptures to make it complicated. We take it at the simplest way to begin. Um. So the Lord does not keep silent. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a burning torch. Now, uh, hear this, hear this. You shall be called by a new name. The faithful to God until this time have been called Israelites. Well, they went through Hebrew uh, and then Israelite. And then as those from Judah are taken into the Babylonian captivity and taken over to Babylon, when they return, they return to Judah. And during that time, they've been called the Judeans, which becomes Jew. Okay, um, But they will have a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. And you shall crown and in you shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal, di royal diadem. Just another word for crown. It's that, it's that leafy crown that the Romans have uh, in the hand of your God. No longer forsaken, no longer desolate, but my delight is in her and your land married. The new name is Christian. Follower of the way initially, but Christian in Christ. Those who are in Christ. It's a new name. Right? Didn't exist before the Lord gave it to us. The Lord gave it to us through 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 Christ. Right? Um, and and the 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 relationship of God to his people in the Old Testament is that of creator and created, or of God and 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 uh, faithful, uh, or his husband and wife at times. Um, but in the, in the New Testament, in, in the work of Christ, we become the bride of Christ, right? And he, our bridegroom, the groom. Um, and so this is, this is a foretelling of what comes, right? Um, so your sons shall marry you, and, and as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. He rejoices over us in faithfulness, in, in what, what he has accomplished for us. 
Now wait, um, this is not over. I will not give your grain to be food for your enemies, and foreigners shall not drink your wine for which you have labored. Now, uh, but those who garner it shall eat it and praise the Lord, and those who gather it shall drink it in the courts of my sanctuary. Now, this is me. I haven't researched this, but as I was reading this, I'm looking at this, I'm going, well, what is grain? How do you eat grain? Well, you don't, as a rule, you don't take grain out of the field and just eat it, right? You make bread. So if you're going to eat your grain, you're going to eat bread and the wine that you drink, right? Well, what are those? Those are the elements used in the Holy Supper of Christ, right? The, the, the sacrament of the altar, the Lord's Supper, communion, Eucharist, whatever name you want to place upon it, bread and wine that is now his true body and blood, eaten by those in the sanctuary, right? This is a, this is a, a, a early statement of why the church practices what's called closed communion. Not close. There's no such thing as close. That's something that came out of ecumenical discussions, and it's wrong. Communion is either open or closed. Closed is the, the Lord's Supper is only shared with those who share in the confession and faith of those with whom they consume. Uh, open is anybody can have, right? Believer, unbeliever or not. Why closed? Because these are the things that God gave Christians to eat and drink. Those who believe in him those who confess him to be Lord. When those who do not believe come to the rail and eat, or those who are involved in open and unrepentant sin come to the table and eat and partake of the body and blood of Christ, they do so to their own damnation. Take a look at 1 Corinthians 11. You go look. I'm not going to bring it up for you. You go look. Um, and so the church from the beginning practiced closed communion. Only those in confession, um, in, in the same confession, participated in that meal. I will not, again, give your grain to the food of your enemy. And it, it's not a matter that, that if somebody doesn't believe, then they don't receive it. No, because God didn't say, well, this is so dependent on your belief, on your faith, this will be what I say it is. No, he said, this is my body, take and eat. This is my blood, take and drink. Right? So whether you believe it or not, it is what it is, right? <laughs> no, I was going to say something else. I'm not going to. It involves yellow snow, and I don't want to get into it. Um, so go through the gates, prepare the way of the people, build up Clear the stones, lift up a signal, a sign over the peoples. The cross, Christ raised up. Behold, the Lord has proclaimed to the end of the earth. Say to the daughter of Zion, behold, your salvation comes. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. And they shall be called the holy people. You and I, by faith in Christ. The holy people. Holy means set aside for the purposes of God. The redeemed of the Lord. The bought back from sin, death, and hell. Right? And shall not be, and, and, and you shall be called sought out. For when the Lord is lifted high, all will come to him. All will be called to him. The city not forsaken. This is the promise. This is the promise of salvation, a salvation in Christ Jesus in the book of Isaiah. See, the Old Testament's full of gospel. It points us to Christ. And that's what's valuable about this year we've had going back through the Old Testament texts, is they all point us back to Jesus. I mean, when you take a little snippet, you might not get that, right? And if you were to open the newspaper and read one line out of the newspaper, you may not get the full story. But when you put all of these texts together, they point to the coming of the Messiah and the promise that we have in Christ Jesus. That's why I wanted to do this. Uh, not, not just the New Testament, but the Old Testament, so that we can see that God, from the beginning, God has been working towards the salvation of mankind. And this was the plan from the beginning. 
And now that plan has been given. We just celebrated the birth of he who has come to save us, Jesus, whose name means he saves his people, right? But he comes not just to, although he was sent just to Israel, when they rejected him, he became for all people. Go read Galatians chapter 3. That's what we had yesterday for a reading, what I preached on. You who have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. And you are now in Christ, sons of God. That's the blessing we have, my friends. As this new year begins, as we go into 2023 and and, and we, we look back at 2022, it's done, it's passed, it's gone, it's over. Let's move into 2023 in faith. Let's look towards he who has saved us. Let's, let's look not to being a, a, a place called, a, a place called uh, forsaken and desolate, but that we be called, my delight is in her and Mary, and that we be the city sought out, a place not forsaken in Christ Jesus our Lord, of which you are part as a holy people to your Lord. Amen. Let's look to our prayer of the day. Doing a lot of pointing today. You know, what's fun is this, when you point on a camera, right? You know, if I came and pointed in your face, it wouldn't be like this. But in the camera, it's like, whoa. <laughs> Let us pray. Most glorious Trinity, in your mercy, we commit to you this day our bodies and souls, all our ways and goings, all our deeds and purposes. We pray you so open our hearts and mouths that we may praise your name, which above all names alone is holy. And since you have created us, excuse me, created us for the praise of your holy name, grant that our lives may be for your honor and that we may serve you in love and fear. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. And I'm going to have a sip of coffee here. And we continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we begin a new cycle of weeks here on this first Monday in January. Uh, Monday morning's prayer, the, the first week of prayers, focus in on petitions that, that, come, for, that, are, that come from the Lord's Prayer. So today, thy kingdom come. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of David, your eternal throne in heaven fulfills the promise made to your father, David. The visions of Holy Scripture depict that throne in utmost glory. Yet you arrived at your heavenly coronation by way of humility, meekness, mercy, and grace. You were born not in a palace, but in a low estate. You rode no war horse into the city of Jerusalem, but a humble donkey, as Solomon before you. In love for your own people, you submitted to the earthly authority of Pontius Pilate and were crucified with a crown of thorns and purple robes and mockery. Yet how true were the words posted above your crucified head, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Now you are risen, ascended, and reigning with all authority in heaven and on earth. As my heavenly King send your word and spirit to conquer whatever regions of my heart have I have withheld from the righteousness and reign of your kingdom of grace. With your wisdom that exceeds that of Solomon, rule over my mind, which is darkened by worldly thoughts. In your goodness and love, direct and order all my ways, that I may sincerely believe and live a godly life before you this and every day. 
in your name, I pray. Amen. And we'll start today um, as we go through this week also with uh, a prayer uh, for vocation. Lord God, you give work to every person according to your purposes. Since the fall, it is your will that we should eat our daily bread by the sweat of our brow until we return to dust and that we should live by the work of our hands and prosper. As I begin my calling today, grant that my efforts and labors are not in vain, but help the work of my hands to produce good things that will be of service to my neighbor. Lord, I ask your favor and blessing at all times, for all things depend on it. Help me accomplish my work without doing wrong to anyone, so that, so that I may honor you and provide for those near to me, especially for my household. Bless us more and more, body and soul, and all we have. Your blessings enrich me so I need not be anxious. Lord, gladden my heart and make me cheerful as I work. Give me health, life, and your blessings. All this I ask in submission to your holy will. Lord, hear my prayer. Into your hands I commend my ways. I put my hope in you, who does all things well. The Lord be praised. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we ask you also that you would hear the prayers and our prayers of those who are in need, whether it be from injury or illness or pangs of age. We pray especially this day for Pat, Lois, Ann, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Jeremy, Steve, and all who call upon your most holy name. Strengthen them, Lord, for the days have had, and remind them always of what they've received in Christ Jesus our Lord, as you give them that assurance and, and comfort by your Holy Spirit. This we ask in his most holy name. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. What? Oh, Bonnie says I need to renew my screen and see if there's anybody else that popped in here. That just about concludes our devotions for today. Oh, yep, there's Kelly. Good morning, Kelly. And I think that's all. Well, God's peace to you all. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning, Wednesday morning, the 3rd of January, for our daily devotions together. Go forth and serve the Lord in his grace to, to his glory. God's peace. See you tomorrow.